Amen. I am so glad to be here. I tell you, my Sundays are amazing. It's kind of like I feel sorry for anybody that's not me. <laughs> you, you know, you know when uh, when Pastor Chris is up here singing and praying and talking, uh, I hope everybody's listening to that because that comes straight from the heart, and it's what a blessing to us and. I'm just blown away that that God would uh, bring uh, Pastor Chris, Pastor Gerald, and uh, to us uh, to lead this ministry. There's many people all around the world that uh, get to uh, be involved in our in our services, and so that's that's really awesome. Uh, What is Jesus worth to you? You know, if, are you really paying attention to the songs that Pastor Chris has selected for us? The words. When you sing those songs, do you mean it? You know? What is he worth to you? Is he worth your life? I know he's worth mine. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit, what they produce. So what are we producing? It's not about what we're being. What are we producing? You'll know them by their fruit. So consider this. What do others think Jesus means to you? by how you live. Where do they see him on your priority list? We're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. There is no higher calling. Everything else plays second fiddle. How we represent our Savior is, is our prime directive. The Great Commission. How are you doing? How do others think you're doing in representing the Lord Jesus Christ? This is so important because your life can lead people to Christ or away from Him. You know, we can't just be Sunday morning Christians. And if we're only here after we get saved to represent Jesus, how are we doing? Are we getting the word out? Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. How do people see your life? You know what the cool thing about this is? is You can change that. It really is easy to make him a priority because once you make him number one, everything else is going to like fall into place. And you're still going to have trials, but guess what? Other people see how you endure the trials. What in the world makes that guy keep going? You know? Man, it comes wave after wave after wave. What can overshadow the truth that you're going to heaven? <laughs> Bring it on, Satan. You know? I mean, what is he going to do? Kill me? Send me to heaven? That's a goal, right? So is that your goal? Is your goal to finish the race with dignity? You know. Others are watching us, guys. They are. What is Jesus worth? What's the value of him in your life that you project out there to others, for others to see? We are the light of the world. We don't just carry it. We are. So we are his spokespersons down here on earth. Wow. That's exciting to me. It's, it's really exciting that God would even allow us to represent his son. Wow. There is no higher calling than that. I mean, you know.
things that are worth a lot to you, you treasure more. You know, and there's some people out there that that uh, a family has two incomes because having a new car is such a priority, and so they work every day for the money to pay those payments. It means something to them. You know. What does Jesus mean to you? What's he worth? You can't put it, you can't answer that question. There are no words in the English language that can come close to what he is to us who are going to be able to spend eternity with him. Wow. My heart is burdened for most of the world's population that are not going to see him. Most of the world. There are countries out there that almost nobody in their country is going to heaven. You know, they worship false gods. But here in America, we can openly claim to be Christians. We need to put some substance to that. We need to prove it by our lives that we belong to him. We belong to him. And so, uh, a couple announcements. Uh, Johnny is out, uh, had a surgical uh, procedure this week. Uh, a lot of health issues. Um, pray for Nancy. She's out for a while. Uh, our family. <laughs> we need to be praying for our family. Judy, uh, been gone almost a month, and she'll be back Wednesday. And so... Uh, I'm excited about that. Excited about, she'll be able to push the button on the microwave now instead of me. <laughs> you bet. That's good stuff. So, uh, your bulletin, grace is for Christians. God doesn't give grace to people that are not saved. Grace is for Christians. And it is not a license to sin. I've told you guys so many times that I even know pastors who claim that they can live like they want because they're covered by grace, they're saved by grace. That's a dangerous statement. Dangerous statement because it's a heart, it shows your heart condition. You know, it, it reveals what you are inside. So I got a few scriptures I want to share with you guys today. Why do we need grace? How many of you love the Bible? Man, I tell you. <laughs> Isn't it awesome that we have pure truth that we can draw from every day? That every problem we'll ever face is covered in it? Isn't that cool? Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace that you've been saved. That's the main reason we need grace, because we can't go to heaven without it. Just in order for us to get saved, it's by God's grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Not by works, you can't earn it. And the reason for that is so that no one can boast, look what I did. You ain't do nothing. It's what God has given you. That's the main reason we need grace. Because the Bible says that it's because of grace that we're saved. Thank God for grace, huh? God is consistent. You know, he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that amazing? Some people discount the Old Testament. It was the same God in the Old Testament. You know? I don't discount it at all. So God the Father shows us favor. How many like the book of James? I'd love the book of James. <laughs> James 1.17 says, Every... It didn't say most. It says every good and perfect gift is from above. 
coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, like everything else on earth does. God is consistent. He's always there when we need him. Isn't it cool that we can pray 24-7? That when we're going through trials, get a phone call in the middle of the night, disaster has struck somewhere, we get to break heaven because God is lending an ear to us. Isn't that amazing? The one who spoke this whole world into existence wants to hear from us individually. How big is that? How big is that? God the Holy Spirit shows us favor. In Hebrews 10, 28 and 29, it says, anyone, there's no one left out, who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three. Two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? This scripture right here covers the whole thing. What's Jesus worth to you? What is the Father worth? What's the Holy Spirit that indwells every Christian? What does it mean to you? Wow. You are empowered if you're saved. I mean, we can do all things through Christ? I mean, does the Bible lie? No. There's nothing that God has set before us to do that we can't do with His power. Without Him, we can do nothing. That's what happens a lot of times. We try to live our life uh, without consulting Him and without representing Him, and it's a failure. But that's what it means who has insulted the Spirit of grace. Leaning on our own understanding. <laughs> the Bible says we can't do that. So, so far we've shown how God shows us, or the Father shows us favor, the Holy Spirit shows us favor, and the Son, wow, shows us favor. In 1 Corinthians 1.4, I always thank God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. Wow. John 1, 17 says, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Isn't it good that we're not under the law? Isn't it good? We don't have to make all those sacrifices on the altar every day. Guys, what a blessing it is for us to be saved by grace. And that we can, we have this free will thing that we can choose to follow Jesus. But so many choose not to. There's no middle ground. You're either for him or against him. So what do others say about you? They say that guy is a... He loves the Lord Jesus. Look at that guy. Just all over him. That's how I think about Pat. Man. First time I met Pat, I go, whoo, boy, I get tingles. You know, it's just... God puts people in your life that uh, for a reason... You know. You must accept the gift. This is a free gift. God is, is not putting you in handcuffs and making you accept his son. That's why my heart grieves for people all around the world. But in the South, when people think they're saved because they their, their mom drug them to church when they were kids and they were born in the Bible Belt? How sad is it that they're lost? How sad is it when anyone is lost? So are we doing our part in living for God every day, 24-7? That's what this boils down to today, guys. We can make a choice. We have free will. We can choose to set ourselves aside and take the counsel of God, or we can choose to try to do it on our own and other people will watch us flounder.
2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he was in, he was in heaven, and don't get no more richer than that, do it. Yet for your sakes, because of us, he became poor. Come to this earth, suffering on our behalf. So that you, through his poverty, through his suffering, might become rich. We get to go to heaven. Isn't that exciting? I think Jesus is going to come back in the wintertime. The Bible says he's coming to the clouds. So it doesn't look like he's coming today. Ain't no cloud. Right? I'm just teasing. It, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 10. Praise, oh God, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us in the heavenly realms. Guys, we're already blessed. With every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us. In him before the creation of the world. To be holy and blameless in his sight. Some people stumble at that last statement. Remember, it's holy and blameless in His sight. When God looks at us through the filter of His Son, He sees holy and blameless. We don't see that, do we? But you know what? It don't matter what we see. How does the Father look at us? Holy and blameless because of His Son. And His Son has filtered out all of our mess. Past, present, and future. Guys, isn't that exciting? In love, how many of you know that God's love, or God's love of the world, they split heaven for us? In love, he predestined us. He chose us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. It's all about him, guys. It's all about him. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, Jesus. In him... In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the shedding of his blood. Blood out for us. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Do you know God chose Jesus to bleed out because that's giving it all. There's nothing left. You're fully spent when you bleed out. You know. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. It's all about him. Which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment. To bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. What cool statement that is that Jesus made. There's no power other than him, right? If it's all been given to him, he represents us. And he bought us and he paid for us in full. He owns every Christian. What do others think about how you value our Savior? Guys, that's a profound statement. And guys, it's something we all need to be asking ourselves.
because we are representing him out there. So what are others thinking about our walk with Christ? So the bottom line is Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now remember guys, don't confuse this with we're going to fall short every day. Do we intend to fall short? Guys, God forbid. If God forbids it, guess what? We need to be paying close attention to it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What's the pattern of our life? You know? Do we live like we want because it, it's covered by what Jesus did on the cross? God forbid. It's all about heart condition. How much does he mean to you? Others will see that. Surrendering your life. Remember, if you're saved, it's not your life anymore. It's His life. Surrendering your life to Jesus is the only way to have God's grace and favor in your life. How many of you want to be blessed? I do. I we read in, in the Bible all the things that Blessed are those, blessed are those, blessed are those. Isn't it cool that we have our instructions in the Word of God? Romans chapter 6, guys, is only 23 verses long. I suggest that you read that this week. It's amazing. God has given us everything that we need to live a a prosperous Christian life. A vict in victory no matter what it looks like on the outside. Remember, other people are watching, man. What are they seeing? Do you think Jesus is smiling when they see you reacting to other people, representing him? Or is he shaking his head? <laughs> you know? How many of you want to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant? Absolutely. Well done. That's, that's what I want to hear. But I'm going. Those of us in here who are saved are going. Those of us on the internet that are watching this are going if they're surrendered to Jesus. But that's, ev that's evident in your life when your life is surrendered to Him because everything is different. It's not all about you anymore. It's all about Him. Amen? Amen. Amen? Father, we are so blessed that You made a way that we could never make on our own. That we're not going to burn in hell. Father, we pray for all those people out there, Father, that are that are lost, but they think that they're saved. Oh, God. Uh, remove the scales from their eyes that they can see that only a surrendered life to your Son gets us into heaven. Lord, how, may we produce good fruit, Lord, that others would see our lives and glorify you. And Father, uh, we're so thankful for the church you've given us, Lord, and uh, pray that you would bless our offering now as we're, we're uh, closing this part of our service, Father. Father, I'm so grateful for the worship team we have. I'm so grateful for Pastor Gerald and Marjorie sacrificing every week and bringing food for us so that we can break bread together. How amazing is that, God, that we can sit together and break bread every week in your name. 
And so, Father, we ask that you bless our food, that it would give us health and strength, Father, to go out and represent you honorably to this world. No wishy-washy. Honorably. Father, I think about Revelation 3.16. He said, because we're neither hot nor cold, you want to spit us out of your mouth. May that not be so for us here at Set Free and around the world. Lord, may it not be so. May we please you. Well done, good and faithful servant, is what we long to hear. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.